Taking a deep breath. Notice that sometimes when you take a deep breath, you actually break the breath in different staccato segments. But that's actually information about what's happening to us in our life. We're getting fragmented. And so setting a prayer and an intention here today to bring those fragmented pieces back together, one breath, one sound, finding the harmony and coming together. for us all to connect 
to the collective field of that ocean as we bring it into greater harmony.
cycling through your cells as your breath carries life force into your body and taking a deep breath of that mana, that life force, that power that we have access to every single connects us all.
of being able to breathe. What it feels like to generate that energy in your body as you inhale. And as you exhale, what are you letting go of? What keeps you from being in harmony with others? And allowing for your breath to be the remembrance that we all share the same breath. from the same mother, the same fire, the same breath, the same water.
and asking for the guidance from those in the unseen realms, how we can be of highest service to bringing harmony back to this planet. in relation to each other, in relation to all the beings, animals, plant life, and Gaia. How can we be part of the grand vision of our Earth Mother? What is her vision for herself? We have all come to be a cell in her body, to restore back resonance, connection, community, and harmony in the songs that we are singing. May our voices and our life be in dedication to bringing harmony to the symphony of the collective. In each of our own unique ways, through our divine essence, our ocean in a drop. And may we remember that that drop is so important, that that cell in the body of Gaia is so important. To connect with the uniqueness of your Dharma and your path. And may we always remember that we are the ocean, inextricably connected to one another. And may every breath that we share on this planet be for love. Taking a breath into the belly, make it deep and rich and grateful. And exhaling as we come back into this physical space, feeling the blessings of life. of breath, of sound. <sighs> and just bringing awareness back into the body, wiggling your fingers and toes, placing a hand on your body. Say thank you, body. You are epic. What a miracle you are. Thank you for being the vessel that I get to live this life in. I love you and I will love you better. Thank you, body. It's interesting that you're mentioning body because I had a very powerful vision of the collective, all of us, 
symbolized in the form of the grand man. So this one man in my vision, which symbolized everybody, was chained down and covered in all kinds of different armor and every different type of thing that would keep him from actually releasing and being free and wild and living his true potential. And as you were singing, there was like a liberation of the true essence of what it means to be a human. Like, what, it, what does it really mean to be a human, to breathe and to love and to fuck and to grow and to inspire and to laugh and to live? Like, like we're really, like, held down tight now. And I think what I'm feeling and sensing is that, like, we're, there's a part of us, and this is another part of the vision, that was just wanted to, like, rip through mm. who we currently are. Like, there's a part of you that just wants to rip through you and be the baddest version of you that ever was. Just go like, rah, and just all of those layers of your skin shed like a snake that sheds its skin in one piece. Just like, rah, I'm good now. I'm free. Oh, shit. <laughs> you know? And it's like the, the why, like that thing of like, oh, wow, we're free. Mm. We're like really free. And what keeps us trapped are so many different judgments and fears, and I could see all of those coming in too. Little judgments, little fears, little ways in which the mind thinks that, oh, people won't like me then, or this won't. But it's all so wrapped up in vanity. It's not connected to the essential essence of everything. Mm -hmm like the ocean, like life itself. Mm -hmm. It's like everybody's so worried about what they're going to look like mm -hmm. that they forget that that doesn't even matter. It matters what do we look like, the grand man, all of humanity. How are we living? What are we doing? What are we doing to ourselves? Mm -hmm. You know, we just got finished spending a, some time with Robert F. Kennedy Jr., you know, we went into a sweat lodge. We sweat. We prayed. We remembered the old ways. And we brought new ideas and new people in. And there's a possibility of this not only happening individually, but collectively, that has me feeling really fired up right now. <laughs> like, because the individual that peels out of their old skin, all of their doubts and all of the ways that they've been ashamed or worried or vain or, or concerned about what other people think or then jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous of you. I want your stuff. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> all of those little demons like, no, take off my demon suit and let my radiant angel body come out <laughs> and do what I'm here to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. It sounds yeah. like you had a very inspired experience. <laughs> I did. Thank you. Your sound was part of that. It was mm. like breaking off. It was like, all right, in different, every different chamber, every different way. But it was like, let's go metamorphosis. Let's take the old skin off and let's birth something new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it felt, wow. It, for me, Throughout the whole thing, it just felt like unity. It felt like, what would it, you know, it's like, what is that future vision of what's possible for how we relate to other, for how we relate to the earth, for, you know, where the choices that we make, where are they coming from? It was just like this very evolved um it almost felt like singing a future vision 
of what's possible and, and what Charles Eisenstein would call, you know, the more beautiful world our hearts know is possible. It felt like actually vibrationally experiencing that through the sound. And it doesn't mean that, you know, everything is just perfect. Like there, are, you know, there, are, there are other places where like things happen. It's not, we're not trying to get to like a utopia where there's never any resistance or, or, or challenge or dissonance, but overall it just felt like it was breathing, it was breathing hope into what's possible. And it felt like I was accessing that potential through the sound and actually like feeling it through my body and singing it through my voice. And, um, it was such a gift. Wow. Yeah, and that it, was great. <laughs> and especially, you know, our, our last episode, um, it was the contrast. It was, you know, heavier and, you know, the, the energy felt just a little bit darker and, and heavier and, you know, and, and this just felt like, wow, like the total, <laughs> total polarity of, um, of what our last episode was. And so, yeah, just getting to feel all aspects of life, like what a gift, you know, even to be able to be alive to experience both of those, like what a gift. Yeah. And then there's cycles on cycles, you know, we're following the cadence of the lunar cycle, but we as a human being are also, that's why when a woman is bleeding, they call it on her moon. Mm -hmm. Like we're following mm -hmm. cycles. We're all in cycles. <clears throat> and there's cycles where we're supposed to shed and there's cycles where we're supposed to grow. And there's, this is life. That's mm -hmm. what life does. There's a molting process. All of the old, you build up this, you know, you build up this identity self character and then you get too big for it. And then you got to molt it. And then you got to become who you actually are. But sometimes like this identity structure, what I call the player, like the person with the jersey and the name and the stats and the records and everything like that. It's like the player, the identity, the ego structure. It gets so important, you know, that you can't that it can't shift and it can't molt and it can't change. Mm. And really what's underneath it all is the athlete, is the, is the primate, is the human being that just knows and wants to drum and sweat and sing and mm. dance and burn the sage and, <laughs> and drum, drum and, and dance, dance and, and keeping the, the fire, fire burn, burn the, the sage, sage. <laughs> exactly <laughs> that's what there's there's this part of us that's yeah all right yeah we're savages yeah but we're also lovers and communal and we help each other and we feel and we have mirror neurons that connect with another being like there's so much bullshit that is projected about who we are, but actually we're awesome. Mm -hmm. We have built-in things that give us built-in empathy and compassion, but it doesn't work if you're just on a, you know, screen name, yeah. like, you know, Troll6969 Starboy, <laughs> you know, he can say whatever he wants, but if <laughs> Troll6969 Starboy was here, I'd be like, yo, what's up? And it would be a totally different conversation. Totally. You know, so just remembering that, like, humans are awesome. We're incredible. Mm -hmm. And we just have to get back in touch with that and recognize that everybody else who's a human is awesome and incredible. And they may have some fucked up programming and thoughts and ideas and some things. And they may need to sweat and cry and laugh and orgasm a lot. <laughs> And again, but they're awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's, what's coming up for me is, as you're saying that too, just, I've noticed within myself, just in the kind of inner work that I've done to feel like I'm, I'm just really in integrity with myself in the moves that I make. They're not because I'm, it's coming from a place of trying it's like that place of that I used to exist in that was like seeking the approval of like, am I doing it right? Am I doing it right? You know, and then that would kind of like, then when I would get attacked on Instagram for whatever, it would just like ruin my day. <laughs> you know, because there was some part of me in that kind of 
you know, like, like the man you're talking about that was just kind of like, uh, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm doing things based on how I think they will be received. And then I want my, I want my image to be received a certain way. So if it isn't, then that's, you know, it's, it's, it's like the projection that I'm doing of myself. Well, that, that projection and is very, so fragile. Totally. It's like made out of the second, Because the second there's like, you know, anyone that comes at it, it's like, it, it, it's devastating and it's just like it's so and I and, and it used to ruin my day all the time before it um and I've noticed you know in in the, through going through really difficult initiations over the last six months like I really feel like I'm in this place where I'm just so radically myself yeah and so I've got, gotten way more arrows than I've ever gotten but it's just like but I don't I'm just me. Like there's, there's no hook that you can put inside of me because I'm just being me. So like, I don't have anything to like, that's, I can recognize that's actually your projection and like, you know, love and bless, but like that has, that has nothing to do with me. Yeah. And it's, it's just like an interesting, I think just as like a practical sort of like life, you know, um, expression, that I feel like I've moved into is like, wow, like there's been a lot of times recently where I've gotten attacked or just like, like somebody literally on my Instagram made like a poem out of hating me, <laughs> like fuck your feminism, but they made it's it a poem. Yeah, and I was like, I mean, wow. I was like, wow. They had to have spent like an hour just hating me, but like, cool. <laughs> like, yeah, at least you, they made it a poem. You speak, at least you made it a poem, but like, wow. But the things like that used to really hit something inside because I wasn't really anchored in who I am. And I'm, I'm not trying to prove anything. I'm just being, I'm just mm -hmm. me. Yeah. And, and I, I, you know, I really, I really like hope and pray everyone can experience that sense of like empowerment. Cause it feels like that vision, you know, that you were talking about, like I used to feel, you know, whether it was my appearance or whatever it may be, like I used to feel really defined by people's reflection of how they received me and to liberate myself from that is like, man, it's yeah. I mean, to just, to just break the looking glass of like all the ways that we're looking at ourself through everybody else's eyes, mm -hmm. right? Like it's useful. It can be helpful. Maybe we can see some things that other people can't see, you know, and like maybe we can see some things through other people that we can't see rather, you know, so yeah, great. Did you see that thing? All right. Maybe you said it like an asshole, but maybe you did notice something and maybe you are right. You know, like, fair, fair enough. So, like, there's always a place where we can look through their eyes, but not to take it so seriously that when they take a swing, we're there to receive the punch. We need to be like, now, I don't, do you ever see the movie Ghost with Patrick Swayze? Yeah, I don't know if I would remember well, it well enough to, yeah. oh, yeah. When... Pro probably a lot of people, maybe some people have seen it, Don't but there's are. a ghost in Patrick Swayze, and the ghost tries to take a swing, but it's, but it's a ghost, and like you can't hit it. And it's like, that's that's what we are. They're like trying to take us, anybody trying to take a swing at you, just don't be there. Just don't be there. Just be in your true self, which is not the projection. It's like, so there's taking a swing at the projection. Your true self is rooted as a human that's a part of the earth and as spirit that's a part of all creation. So this projection is awesome. But if someone takes a swing at it, they're just going to swing through the hologram. But don't take it seriously. Like you're, you're swinging, you're going to shoot an arrow at my hologram. Good luck. It's going to go right through. <laughs> it's not going to draw blood. <laughs> you know, like duel to the death. Well, good luck. Where am I? I'm not even here. <laughs> You know? You're like you're like uh, Luke Skywalker and yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> and and that's and I think that's a, that's the way that people we just when you feel that connected yeah. to the earth and to God, like the rest of it is just it's just for fun. Mm -hmm. It's just for fun. It doesn't matter to take you don't have to take it so seriously. Yeah, 
and then find then, all right, what are the guiding first principles and values? What are the things that actually move you to do what you want to do? Mm -hmm. And that's just to remember that you want to do good. Mm -hmm. Just do good. Put out that goodness, however that is, and whatever your energy is that you can contribute rather than take, you know, how are you contributing to a more beautiful world? Mm -hmm. In what way? Yeah. And always we're, we're transmitting constantly, constantly transmitting. So what are we transmitting? Are we transmitting something beautiful? Like beautiful words, as our brother Prongi said, like the beauty way, mm -hmm. the beauty way, like do it in a, like, are you doing it in a beauty way? Totally. And that doesn't mean you can't have raucous laughs and fucking go wild, but it's, it's like beautiful. And that's the thing. That's the thing that's so funny too, is like when I feel a personal dissonance with somebody, how much of my energy that takes up because of how I'm thinking about it. And like, it doesn't feel good. Like it's, it's ultimately a terrible experience to have, yeah. but you're choosing like, and I'm just talking about myself. Like you're, you're literally the one that's choosing to have that experience because of the way that you're choosing to think about it. And it's like, how can you, something that was Something that was, I know this is like a little bit of a tangent from com totally completing that thought, but <laughs> that's where my mind is going right now. Go for it. Um, so I would love for you to share a bit about, because literally a week ago, the place that you were in internally in yourself, yeah. like, you know, uh, for me as well, was not in this kind of place. So for people who, you know, it's easy to hear and understand and to contemplate these kinds of ideas. And like in the real world, just a week ago, this was not really a place that you could access. And so um, maybe just speaking a little bit to your personal experience and how, like how you've been able to find your way, maybe some practical tools of how you've been able to find your way to this moment, because, you know, we're tuning into the collective and I'm also tuning into where you're at. So, you know, you're, you're a, a prominent frequency in the field that allowed for this whole beautiful transmission to happen. So I think that would be a really great thing to share. My feet keep falling asleep. <laughs> There's always going to be rhythms and cycles in life. You know, it's the principle of rhythm in the hermetic wisdom tradition, right? The principle of rhythm. You got a lot of hair on that microphone. There we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so the principle of rhythm. So... This is something to really remember. Remember the principle of rhythm. Remember that there are going to be times where you forget. There are going to be times where you forget this feeling and this understanding that you forget the best of you. And I, that's where I was last week. I forgot. Mm -hmm. I forgot about the principle of rhythm. I knew about it, but somehow my mind wouldn't let me believe that, okay, I'm going to go through this process. It's going to be hard and out the other side is going to come something, you know, I'm going to molt that skin of whatever I need to. And out of the crucible of that, of that constriction is going to emerge a new birth, you know, like out of the darkness of the new moon will emerge starting to grow new light, right? Like that's, and I couldn't see it then. Which is crazy because, like, I know this, you know, like, it's not new information, but that's the way that this internal force, the anti you, the deceiver, you know, it deceives you and it'll say, no, this time, no, it's not a rhythm. It's going to be forever. And it tries to make it actually forever by telling you that it's going to be forever. When really, if you just step back, you'll understand that there's a rhythm to things. Mm -hmm. Highs and lows, it's like a sine wave. Everything in the universe from the one sound moves in these rhythms. And that's the thing I forgot last week. And 
it's crazy, you know, to really look back because that was just a completely different person. <laughs> Aubrey of a week ago is a completely different person than the Aubrey that's here right now. Yeah. And that's the blessing of our life. <laughs> we get to do that. Heraclitus's quote, no one steps in the same river twice because it's not the same river and they are not the same person. Mm -hmm. You can't step in the same river twice because you're not the same person and it's not the same river. That means that every time you go in to any sleep, you can emerge a new person or even splash water on your face in the bathroom or take a shower. You can just say, ah, new person now with continuity to the old person, of course, but you can be new because the, the way that I see the world now, it's such a much more beautiful world and more hopeful world and so many more things are possible and so many more avenues for joy and laughter and love and connection are available. Mm -hmm. From that purview at the downswing of the rhythm where I didn't even remember that I was in a downswing of a rhythm, I just thought this was me forever now and here I am. Eeyore in the gray. So sad. So sad. So sad. I'll just go stand in the corner. Yeah, exactly. Just be exactly. Sad by myself. Exactly. Exactly. And it's just, uh, and those those times are going to happen. But as the Kabbalion says, like the master remembers, remembers the principle of rhythm, and actually moves back to allow that wave to happen without so much attachment and investment to it. And uh, I didn't do that <laughs> this last week. Didn't do it. I went for the full ride. I was like on my boogie board. I was like, meow, 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 and I like wouldn't let go. And I was super Face attached. Diving. Yeah, exactly. Face diving. Kook slam. Kook, 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 kook slam. slam after kook, kook slam. Kook slam straight into the, straight into it. Short break. <laughs> yeah. Just. Whereas, whereas like the master would have been like, oh, not that wave. I'm not going to take that one. That's going to flip me upside down, mm -hmm. you know, pound me in the sand. I'm going to just stay back here. Mm -hmm. And the wave's still going to go. You know, the cycle's still going to turn. Uh, but yeah, I didn't do that. But uh, it's okay. I made it out. Yeah. And it and it seems like of, of all the tools, the very, um, you know, practical tools, just getting like reconnected to your body and your prayer. Yeah, the sweat lodge, you know, the sweat lodge was really the pivotal moment for me that everything really turned mm -hmm. on that moment. And, you know, there's so much to say yeah, we, we about a sweat lodge <laughs> and how powerful that medicine is. But if I had to distill it in just a few words, it's about the willingness to confront discomfort and bless it and find gratitude for it and see the medicine in the difficulty and in the challenge. And so like recapitulate that experience from, oh, this is something that's hard. It's like, this is something that's beautiful and move through that cleansing healing process with like, all right, this is the intensity of the heat and the darkness and the, and the song and just allow yourself to really be reborn. I mean, that's the technology of the, of the sweat lodge. And again, I am just a, I'm only a participant. I don't even know a fraction of the things that like Chase Iron Eyes and Porangi and Waira and all of the great, you know, lodge masters that who still themselves would say they're babies in, in understanding that medicine. But I know that for this time I entered the womb of that, of that of the mother, you know, it's just sweat and dirt and grass and rocks and, and heat and darkness and and the fire you know, that from the rocks and the smoke and all of that. And I entered that one, one person and I emerged a different person. Mm -hmm. I just emerged a different person and it required me to go through 
a contest actually with that version of myself and to actually move through an initiation and actually allow myself to break free of that kind of like the like the original vision that I had all of the shackles and all of the old things that had gotten on top of my body suit mm -hmm. and my psychic body suit just phew, let it melt away yeah and it feels like that's the through your own will the choice of a pattern interrupt because it's so easy when you're in those places of just like everything is so hard like you don't want to do anything yeah it's just like i'm just gonna stay here and be miserable and and you know be hard on myself and in judgment and feel like fear and and all the things it's it's like the it's it feels contradictory to like the place that you're in to actually choose through your will to put yourself into something that really tests you know it like really tests who you are inside yeah and and so it's having those different practices whether it's a sweat lodge or whether it's breath work or whether it's an ecstatic dance and to just make a deal with yourself and like make it ironclad when you are yourself and it's not the anti-you it's not that force of negation that's trying to with its gravitational vacuum like a black hole trying to pull you from your potential the thing that's trying to keep you in chains and from who you really are when you actually have contact with yourself say like all right this is the deal when i'm in one of those situations i vow that no matter whether i want to or not I'm going to either breathe, dance, sweat, cold plunge, work out, whatever. I'm going to do the next thing. Like that is who I am. It defines me. And no matter what, I don't question that thought based upon what I'm going to think then. Mm -hmm. It's like an ethos. Yeah. It's like so you make it an ethos of yours. And an ethos is different. Like an ethos is something that you just do not break. Mm -hmm. And the ethos is when I'm in those difficult situations, I move through them. And it's not to avoid them or not feel them. No, you just go through them like the buffalo, like straight through them. Through the storm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it's been a really, uh, I love that about you, even, you know, in the in the darkest moments your willingness just from the invitation of whatever I may, you know, share with you. Like, do you maybe want to move your body a little bit? Maybe go play basketball? Like, just, you know, just for the... Yeah, and, it, and every it, part it, of me will be, want to be like, no, I don't. But I've made this deal. I'm like, yes, yes. Okay, fine. <laughs> yes. Fuck. I'd rather sit here and be miserable, but fine. <laughs> that's not exactly it. That's not that's an, how it that's happens for me. That's how it happens for me. That's, how it, that's fine. <laughs> Didn't mean to project that one onto you. That one's for sure mine. <laughs> no, I don't want to go do that. Sit here yeah. and be miserable and feel sorry for myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we get, it's just, it's being in devotion to your, to that true version of yourself, your real self, your potential self, your actualized self, being in devotion to that self. Just, I'm devoted to that self. Like your own personal Jesus, baby. Your own <laughs> personal Jesus. Someone help me out here. Graham, shit, somebody. Is that a your song? Own personal Jesus. Jesus. Someone to hear your prayers. Someone who cares. <laughs> yeah, be your own personal Jesus. <laughs> Be your own personal, like, like really though, like really be in devotion to that best version of yourself because guess what? That best version of yourself is connected to the best version of the cosmos, mm -hmm. which is God. That's the Atman and Brahman. That's the connection. That's the monad, the divine spark. You in your unique expression of who you are, the best version of who you are, your actualized self, your potential, that is in resonance with the whole thing, mm. the, that's in resonance with God. You just made me sit upright. Yeah. And just being, so if you're in devotion to that version of yourself, you're in devotion to God. Yeah. 
And it's not the false self that you're in devotion to, which is the vain projection of your identity that's looking at all the things, the craven images of all the things that other people are saying. Measuring everything. Measuring, yeah, yeah, all of that. No, it's the real, living, evolving, molting, rhythmic being that you are that's emerging and reaching ever greater potential through the competition with that anti-you, which is there to compete against you as your opponent, you know, like that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. Be in devotion to that, to be in devotion to being the best. And then from that, you're naturally going to serve the world in the best way possible. And that's how individually and collectively we're going to get out of this mess. Yeah. So as you were speaking, what was coming to me was actually the conversation that you had with Alex Hermosi mm-hmm. at Arcadia and how he was talking about how he would connect with his like 80 year old self. I believe he called him Solomon mm-hmm. and he would just go into meditations and have conversations with his 80 year old self that has all of the perspective that has lived, you know, the, the full breadth and all the dimensions of, of life. And, uh, yeah, it really feels like that kind of practice as you were talking about, like being in devotion to your greatest self. <clears throat> also sort of like tapping the possibility that, you know, in the quantum realm, time is not linear and everything is all happening. All potentials are, you know, all simultaneously happening at the same time. So if we can connect to the future aspect of ourself to look back and kind of make that connection towards, you know, our more realized self. I'm curious what your thoughts are about that since you're so wise. (laughs) Well, I don't know how to think of things really outside of time. It's very difficult to think of things outside of time, but we can use time to actually, you know, we can use time in our imagination and we can, we can move with it. You know, the absence of time just to me feels like you have to go straight to singularity, unchanging, Mm. nothing is there. But to use time, and, and one of the ways you can use time is project, you know, the vantage point and imagine and use our imagination. So until enter the imagination of what your future self would say to you and maybe through just a little bit of magic it's actually a transmission through some way in which we don't understand the cosmos and this interstellar and I don't know how that might work but it can sometimes feel like a little bit of magic if you allow an older version of yourself to talk to you now Mm -hmm. so whether it's imagination or whether there's a little bit of magic or a lot of magic woven in there it's still a valuable practice And I think that person, to me, continually says the same thing, always says the same thing. Like, Mm -hmm. hey, it's going to work out, buddy. (laughs) Just enjoy the ride. It's going to work out, buddy. But enjoy the whole thing. That's what, that's what the older version of me always says. When anybody ever, and the current me, if somebody says, what would you say to your younger self, hey, buddy, it's going to be okay. Enjoy the ride. (laughs) It's like every step along the way, you know, that's what I'm going to, that's what I'm saying to myself until finally that, because that version of me is enjoying the ride. Mm. So how much can I get to that place where I'm enjoying the ride, where I'm actually appreciating, even if we're on a steep uphill climb or if we're going through a massive transformation or separation or anything that's happening, like, enjoy it. Like, find the way. Uh, The Zen master Ikkyu Sojin said, throw me into hell and I'll find a way to enjoy it. Mm. So, like, find a way to enjoy all the rhythms, everything that you're going through in life. Because all you got are rhythms. All you got is life. Like, find the way, no matter where you are, to figure out how to enjoy it. You know, how to live the best version of yourself in that moment. And just, you can do it any time. Yeah, and that feels really related to what was coming through for me 
uh, that I spoke at the end of the transmission of like, we're all a cell in the earth's body, you know, and, and being in devotion to being, you know, the cell that, that resonates with her vision, which is us being more truly who we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is actually what creates the harmony in the symphony of the planet's song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like we're a unique flower on a giant cherry blossom tree of all of life, right? Our blossom, every blossom is unique, but our blossom is unique. And so flower and blossom as uniquely as you can, and you're going to fall and then return back and become minerals to replenish the roots of that tree. It's This is the process that we're always going to be in. But while you're there, flower. You know, like really flower. Like what does your flower look like? What is your unique self flower? Like our teacher Mark Gaffney, you know, says the unique self flower of who we are. You know, who is that? It's, I'm telling you, that potential that you have in there is just ready to rip off all of the other stuff and just burst out petals first. <laughs> petals first. <laughs> I yep. love it. I love you so much. I love you so much this too, baby. So beautiful. Yeah, this is really special. Yeah. Thank you for being you. <laughs> My honor. <laughs> <laughs> and you're welcome. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Uh, love you, family. Thank you for joining us.